Hello everyone, uh, let us continue our uh, lecture series on optimal control theory and uh, today uh, this lecture 27, I will discuss about uh, what is called as linear quadratic regulator design or popularly known as uh, LQR design. We will continue this concept in next lecture as well, there are several things to talk about. But let us see the fundamental things and then uh, associated examples and all in this particular lecture. So, generic objective as far as uh, any optimal control uh, problem is concerned, we have studied this particular class of problems, uh, very large class of problems rather, which tells that uh, the aim is to find admissible time history of the control variable u of t from t0 to t f, uh, which uh, does these three things, uh, which causes the system governed by this nonlinear system dynamics x dot equal to f of t x u to follow an admissible trajectory and it optimizes a, uh, that means uh, minimizes or maximizes a certain meaningful performance index that way and it also forces the system to satisfy proper boundary conditions. Uh, and uh, uh, whatever we discuss in this, uh, this course, we discussed about uh, this particular class of cost functions which is uh, rather fairly generic, talks about many class of systems you can formulate in uh, this kind of cost function. As well as we also assume that the initial time and initial condition of states are all fixed, it is given. Tf is also fixed, only the xf is free. So, those are the class of problems that we are interested in this particular uh, course actually. And uh, associated with this per problem, we also went ahead and derived these necessary conditions. Uh, essentially, it talks about uh, three path conditions and uh, one set of boundary conditions actually. So, uh, path constraints. Uh, one is, uh, I mean two of them are dynamic equations, one is state equation and there is co-state equation and associated with that there is optimal control equation which needs to be satisfied at all point of time. So, that is uh, real s by del e equal to 0. So, these are the state equation being and co-state equation both are dynamic equation, but the problem here is uh, we have split boundary conditions, so half of the conditions are, are known at initial time whereas half, to half of the conditions are known only at final time. That leads us to this problem of uh, two point boundary value problems, which are uh, difficult to solve, uh, uh, I mean in a closed form sense, as well as it is also difficult to solve. Uh, typically, it is uh, it's possible, but it is computationally intensive to solve in a numerical procedure as well. Nevertheless, we have seen this uh, two, three numerical procedures last class, uh, which also gave us a feeling how do we really try to solve it uh, in case we want to solve these problems uh, offline solution basically. I mean if you are interested in offline solution, you can pick up some of those algorithms and try to solve these problems actually. But uh, the question comes, uh, is there a special class of systems uh, problems for which we really do not need those computational intensive procedures, iterative procedures to get a solution. And one of the class happens to be this uh, LQR design which is uh, linear quadratic design, where you are interested in a linear state equation okay, x, dot x plus b u and quadratic performance index. Okay. So, if you have a linear system or rather linearized system and obviously, when you have a linearized system, this x is delta x and u is delta u, we have seen that before in the linearization lecture. And when you have this deviation perturbation sort of ideas and perturbation dynamics associated with that, then obviously, the aim is to kill the deviation or the to kind of nullify the perturbations actually. So, that means, you are interested to derive the, uh, uh, drive the state x to 0 whatever x is there, the main aim is to drive the state x to 0 actually. Okay. So, if you drive the, I mean if the aim is to drive the state x of the linear system or rather the linearized system which is like this to the origin that means x should go to 0, then how do you do that? You can do that by minimizing the following quadratic performance uh, index or cost function actually. Okay. So, with this if you see each of the terms are quadratic in nature, so, there is a final uh, penalty which is x f transpose s f x f and there are path penalty which is x transpose q x plus u transpose r u. If you have this quadratic function and uh, in the uh, I mean on the path and this quadratic function at the t at t equal to t f, then the aim is to minimize this state actually. Okay. So, x should uh, develop towards 0, the, I mean that is our objective actually provided these conditions are met actually. S f and q are positive semi definite matrices and R is typically positive definite matrices. Those are necessary conditions that will pop up in, uh, later also basically. So, we will see that uh, little later. Now, uh, as long as these conditions are met and there are several uh, little bit other conditions that we will see later, these, these kind of conditions, then things will be in place actually. Okay. 
Now, the question is uh, how do you use, okay, the form of the cross function is fixed, but how do you select these matrices S f q and r. So, if uh, I mean these are the only conditions there, but remember these are matrices, these are not even scalars actually. So, selecting matrices which needs to be positive definite and positive semi definite is also not a trivial task actually. So, there are, but there are some guidelines, okay. So, one of the guidelines is, uh, is like that, which is popularly called as Bryson's rule actually. But anyway, so the whole idea here is if you have three different terms, okay, they are competing against each other, then somehow as an intuitive guess, you do not want to have a kind of preferential bias to anybody. So, try to kind of uh, normalize each of the terms, uh, so that uh, they have the, each of the term has a fair chance to contribute actually, that is that's the whole idea there. So, if I select this uh, set Q and R as diagonal matrices and then each of the diagonal element I, I select something like that, suppose S f i is maximum expectable, maximum expected or acceptable value of this 1 over x i f square, then what happens is that this particular thing okay, gets divided by norm of x f in a way basically. Okay. So, it is x transpose x f transpose x f divided by norm of x f basically, I mean that way it is roughly type of uh, norm of not really norm of x f, but uh, norm of maximum value of x f basically okay, that way. Okay. So, it is the similar terms happen here, similar terms happen there. So, you get uh, some sort of a normalization by selecting this way. So, S f i you select uh, maximum expected value of a uh, like 1 by S f i x i f square things like that actually. Okay. Uh, and uh, I mean the whole idea here is S f i uh, I mean if you take let us say if you take q then what you 1 by so q let us say I'll draw this probably. So, q I will put it like 1 1 by q i okay. I mean this is q i basically like q 1 q 2 q 3 in the diagonal everywhere else it is 0 0 and then q i I want to select something like 1 by x i max okay, square that way I will select. So, if I select if I if I see that this is like half q q y, say so the, the this particular diagonal element is something like half q y x i square. So, then if I, I am multiplying this by half uh, x i square basically. Okay. So, if I do that then uh, it turns out that uh, this particular term is nothing but half x i square by divided by x i max square actually. Okay. So, that way is getting kind of normalized there. Okay. Similar thing you do for Q and R actually. Now, there are uh, some facts to remember or some conditions to remember. If this particular design or any other design, this pair A B needs to be controllable, that is that is the first requirement actually for any control any control design for linear system, the pair A B needs to be controllable. And there is also associated condition that A square root of Q needs to be detectable as well actually. That is something related to Riccati matrix solution and all that, uh, which is not discussed so much on that, but AB, if the pair AB needs to be controllable is very apparent. It has to be, it needs to be satisfied for any control design and LQR is not an exception actually. Then these conditions we already discussed, okay. So, these matrices are usually chosen as diagonal matrices and SF and Q needs to be positive semi definite, whereas R needs to be positive definite. And then by default, suppose nobody tells us what is the value of this TF, then the value of TF by default is assumed to be infinity. That means, you are talking about a large final time problem actually. So, there is a necessity, there is a necessity, uh, uh, I mean you will see that that, uh, that uh, assumption TF goes to infinity simplifies the uh, development quite a lot later. And most of the time LQR is uh, used in the infinite time set of anyway you talk about stabilizing problems and all where you inbuilt assumption is T f goes to infinity. So, if nobody tells that it is really a finite time problem, I mean this is also a finite time problem by the way, where T f is actually fixed at infinity. Okay. But if it is not told that okay, T f value is exactly that much, then by default we need to assume that T f is infinity actually. Okay. We will see that in a second why that is uh, beautiful, both it leads to lot of simplification actually. And also remember that constraint problems that state and control inequality constraint problems are not considered as part of this lecture. Okay. Probably those will be considered later or maybe in a different course and things like that actually, not necessarily in this particular course. But there is a so there is a mechanism of handling that in a soft constraint manner. That means if you if you really do not want too much of control here in any channel, then increase this corresponding R. To, to a high value, so that the corresponding u will become small out here actually. So, in a soft constraint manner things are in place, 
but really if you want to impose hard constraints on top of it, then there are uh, different conditions uh, like Pontryagin's principle and all that. We are not going to discuss those things in, in this lecture actually. Okay. So, this uh, anyway. Coming back to this, so that is the problem definition. So, we want this uh, system dynamics in place. So, we want this uh, uh, state to go to 0 along with uh, I mean while doing that we do not want too much of control. So, there is a control penalty as well and uh, this is the particular cost function that we, risk, uh, we are interested in. Initial condition of the state is fixed, but final condition is free. However, final state is actually getting minimized through this particular component of the cost function that is the problem. So, let us go back to this problem and then try to visualize what is happening here. So, the path constraint uh, or the performance index uh, to minimize uh, what and here uh, certainly we are considering a minimization problem because except needs to go to 0 anyway. So, this particular cost function j contains this phi of x f and this l of x u in the in the original setting what we discussed here this phi and this l are given by those those terms actually this phi and that l. Okay. So, path constraint happens to be x dot is x plus v u boundary conditions x of 0 is specified and T f is fixed, but x of T f is free actually. So, under those conditions so how do we handle this, how do we get that actually. Okay. All right. So, we, if we see that I mean let us go back to this problem and try to utilize this necessary conditions of optimality and in that setting we need to first see that phi of x f is this one. Okay. And Hamiltonian is uh, L plus lambda transpose f. So, L is that part of it okay, that is L plus lambda transpose f, f is that part of it. Okay. So, L plus this is L okay, plus lambda transpose f, f is a x plus v u. Okay. So, once this phi and h are ready, we, we can uh, talk about uh, state co-state and optimal control equation as well as the boundary condition. So, the state equation already we know x dot is a x plus v u coasted equation is uh, negative of del h by del x. So, h is already known to us. So, if you see del h by del x this term will throw us q x because x half of x transpose q x uh, del, uh, del by del x of that is actually q x plus there is nothing coming from here, but something coming from here and del by del x of this particular term is nothing but the coefficients getting altered in a reverse sequence. That means, what you really have is a transpose lambda it is not a lambda transpose a, but it is actually reverse order a transpose lambda. So, that is how we get it negative of q x coming from here plus a transpose lambda coming from there. So, that is nothing but lambda dot actually. Then the optimal control equation is del h by del u equal to 0. Now, if you go back to that and uh, see what is del h by del u, h is like that. So, del h by del u again from this component it is uh, nothing but r u okay. and then from this component it is b transpose lambda. Okay, because lambda transpose b u take partial derivative with respect to u, it will turn out to be the coefficient uh, transpose in a reverse order actually. So, that means it is b transpose lambda basically. So, you have this u, okay, u I am sorry r u plus b transpose lambda equal to 0, that means u equal to minus r inverse b transpose lambda. So, that is how you get it actually this one. Okay. And then the boundary condition sense lambda f is del phi by del x of del phi divided by del x f and phi is that. So, del phi by del x f is nothing but that. So, these are the things that we need to account for state equation, co-state equation, optimal control equation which gives you that minus r inverse b transpose lambda uh, equal to u and then this lambda f is a boundary condition which is nothing but s f equal I mean lambda f equal to s f x f. So, this conditions needs to be satisfied together. Remember, if any of the condition is not satisfied, then it is not really an optimal controller. Okay. Now, if you just, uh, just see this equation, this u equal to r transpose uh, minus r inverse b transpose lambda, then once you have lambda known to us, then u is known to us. Okay. So, what we really want in this case is lambda as a function of state so that you our control will act as a, a something like a state feedback uh, form actually if less. Suppose lambda is a function of x then r and v are typically fixed anyway. So, those are known to us. So, as, 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 as long as lambda is a function of x the control becomes really a function of x and we do not want uh, any direct function on time actually. That means, we really do not want to solve this control in an open loop sense. We just uh, write this lambda as a function of x so that you can visualize this control as a feedback control, state feedback control actually. 
Now, you also see that at t equal to t f the lambda f is actually a linear function of x f okay, s f into x f that means lambda f really is a linear function of x f. Now, if you really want to extend that okay, at t equal to t f then uh, if it is a linear function of x f then how about considering lambda at any point of time as a linear function of that particular x in other words uh, lambda of t as a linear function of x of t. So, that is the intuitive guess actually. Okay. The second thing that you should realize okay, you can start with a guess like that, but also remember that LQR problems would, will admit unique solution ultimately. So, if you get one solution then you got almost I mean you got every solution. So, we are interested in let us say we guess this lambda as a function of x taking the clue from there and let us assume I mean let us somehow try to see whether this that particular solution satisfies all these conditions or not. If it satisfies, then we can invoke the uniqueness of the solution and then tell okay, we are we are done anyway. But these are in the, these intuitive arguments aside, there are nice mathematical arguments as well, which actually tells uh, that uh, this lambda of t is uh, lies under something like uh, dual space of x of t. I will not go too much uh, detail into that. Those of you are interested, you can see this reference, the details are there in that. But in a mathematical vector space sort of ideas, you can also justify that lambda of t lies in the dual space of x of t and dual space means it is a space consisting of all continuous linear functionals of x of t that is the meaning actually. So, for this justification point of view also the lambda of t needs to be a, a linear function of x of t. Now, the coefficient matrix p of t okay, remember lambda is n dimensional x is n dimensional. So, p of t is needs to be n by n and we do not want to visualize this p to be a constant p. Okay. We have bring in the flexibility that p of t can in fact be time varying p. Now, with, the, with this relationship in place let us see how do we kind of derive some sort of a simplified version of these three all these four equations were in place uh, embedded into one equation actually. Uh, let us uh, try to derive that. So, we note that uh, lambda of t is equal to p of t into x of t we start from there and then take derivative both sides let us the lambda dot is nothing but p dot times x plus p times x dot directly from this equation. Then uh, x dot is nothing but x plus b u state equation and u is nothing but um, minus r inverse b transpose lambda that is optimal control equation and lambda is again p times x. So, I will put p times x all right. So, I, I took derivative uh, of, of both sides time derivative that is p dot x plus uh, p times x dot. So, p dot x I will not change, I will just keep it as it is, but x dot I know it is a x plus b u using state equation, u is minus r inverse b transpose lambda using optimal control equation that is that is what is here. Okay. Let us see this one first and this one next and then we will uh, see that okay, lambda is nothing but p times x. So, we will just put p times x here, but lambda dot is also that uh, if you go back to the co state equation lambda dot is minus q x minus a transpose lambda and lambda is again p times x. So, minus q x that uh, within bracket plus a transpose p uh, a transpose into lambda, lambda is p x again. So, I put, put that here. So, then I see that all this I mean this this equation is also valid. Now, I will take all the terms in the one side of this uh, equation. So, that x becomes common to everything it is it post multiplies everywhere that is equal to 0 and remember uh, x need not be 0 at any point of time actually the entire vector state vector x uh, is 0 only when t I mean if it is hard, con hard constraint either it is hard constraint problem or t f really goes to infinity even in that sense x is not strictly equal to 0 it will uh, only asymptotically approach to 0 basically. Okay. So, that sense uh, this equation is satisfied for all possible x uh, only if the coefficient becomes equal to 0. So, the, that is how we, uh, we tell that this coefficient matrix has to satisfy this constraint that is this uh, p dot plus p a plus a transpose b minus p b r inverse b transpose p plus q equal to 0 which is commonly called known as Riccati equation or the, this said differential term here p dot. So, it is also called a differential Riccati equation actually. Okay. So, only this is a, remember this particular equation is completely independent of initial condition of the state actually. Now, that is the beauty uh, no matter where you are operating you can simply visualize this differential equation independent of that, that particular initial condition actually. Okay. Now, the so the idea here is can we integrate this equation independently at least. Okay. Now, for that we need a boundary condition and for which we will go back to that, that boundary condition that we have lambda f equal to s f x f and, uh, and then we try to 
derive that because the lambda by definition is p times x. So, at t equal to t f it is p of t f into x of, x of f is equal to s f x f from boundary condition, but x f is free. So, it is not necessarily equal to 0. So, from there you can derive that p of t f equal to s f. So, we have a differential equation matrix differential equation associated with its own boundary condition actually. Okay. So, if you take this boundary condition and this differential equation together then the problem is fairly independent and we do not need this initial condition or information as far as integration of this equation is concerned actually. So, what is the procedure now? Procedure is we can use the boundary condition p of t f equal to s f and integrate the Riccati equation backward from t f to t 0. Remember this equation this boundary condition is available at t equal to t f only. So, starting from t f we can make use of this equation and then integrate this equation backward so that you can get a solution of p of t at every point of time and we can store that p of t get you can store this solution history for the Riccati matrix and then we can compute the optimal control online by using this relationship ultimately. So, remember E equal to minus R inverse B transpose lambda and lambda is nothing but P times X. So, I can interpret this particular thing R inverse B transpose P and nothing but K that is the gain matrix actually. So, remember even if A B uh, were constant matrices that means you had LTI system uh, even then P of T is actually a solution of this differential equation and hence it is actually a time varying matrix. So, even for a LTI system you will end up with a time varying P matrix solution from this Riccati equation actually. <coughs> okay. So, that is the that is the way to do that. So, but in, uh, nevertheless it is it has become completely independent of initial condition all this P solution can be computed offline and you can store that solution and uh, online you just need the information of X and then your controller is ready because gain matrix is already computed from there. So, you select that particular p at any point of time and then compute the corresponding gain that way and you equal your control u equal to minus k times x that is the solution that you get actually. All right, so, that more simplification is that there is no problem of uh, as long as we integrate this differential equation online I mean uh, offline and store it we really do not have to solve this two point boundary value problem uh, online basically that is that is the message there. Okay, so, leads to some sort of lot of simplicity and we do not have to go back to this uh, uh, iterative numerical intensive procedure to solve this class of problems really. Okay. And then what happens this uh, uh, no matter ok it has, it has we have got some simplicity, but also it uh, remember that we need to compute the solution offline integrate the solution offline store it uh, use it online. So, there are several problems associated with that in other words suppose T f I mean our control operation duration is greater than T f then we do not have the solution of P ready for uh, for using it online actually that is one of the problems. And normally speaking we do not want to invite this uh, this uh, differential equation solution uh, uh, I mean if possible you want to avoid that actually. So, is it uh, is it possible in that sense. Remember most of the time this LQR formulation is useful for, for, for infinite time problems actually because the control operation duration uh, I mean uh, is, is typically large compared to the problem con time constant that you are talking actually. So, that in that sense uh, uh, Kalman has given a great theorem which tells that when T f is in fixed at infinity that means T f tends to infinity and your Q and R matrices are actually non time varying but constant and in addition to that A and B are already constant. Let us assume that uh, this you are talking about LTI system. So, A and B are constant in addition to that Q and R matrix also you, you fix it constant and T f goes to infinity that means there is a large final time problem. Under those conditions the theorem tells that p dot tends to 0 for all time. Okay. That means, this uh, p which was actually time varying is no more time varying actually. So, p remains constant so, let us say okay, if you kind of visualize this okay, let us say if you if you one particular element of p let us say I put p 1 1 let us say initially let us say it was this like that. Okay, let us uh, let us start this actually. Okay. Let us say for this particular time, okay, T f, okay, this is our T f 1, so like that. Let me increase the final time 
okay, little more. So, let us say T f 2 is like this, okay. then it turns out to be somewhat flatter and T f 3 is something like this, okay. then it will become even more flatter. Okay. So, this the I mean this happens this trend happens for for every uh, kind of uh, element of P matrix. So, as as T f goes increasing I mean T f increases the final time keeps on increasing these curves are no more time varying actually they become flatter and flatter actually. So, that is the meaning of that theorem. Okay. So, using that theorem that means P dot goes to infinity I mean P dot goes to 0 we can suddenly see that this entire differential Ricard equation terminates to or reduces to some sort of algebraic Ricard equation because the only differential term is p dot here which is 0 now. So, the remaining terms left out is like that which needs to be 0. So, that is how we get uh, this famous algebraic Ricard equation which is given like that. So, this is uh, simply this p a plus a transpose p minus p b r inverse b transpose p plus q equal 0. Just a small comment for those of you know or we will see that in later class that if you take out this nonlinear term, the rest of the term also feels like what is called as Lyapunov equation, that is a linear equation. But this differential, I mean this algebraic Ricard equation uh, is certainly an algebraic equation, however, it is still a nonlinear equation because of this quadratic term in P here. Okay. This, this particular term makes the Ricard equation uh, nonlinear really. Okay. So, that is the point here, AR is still a nonlinear equation. Nevertheless, it is not a differential equation really. Okay. But because this Ricard equation appears in many, many places, uh, the lot of people have paid attention to this and efficient uh, numerical methods are now available to solve this particular algebraic equation. Even though it is nonlinear, algorithms uh, do exist now which can solve this uh, uh, Ricard equation in a very computationally efficient manner actually. Okay. And second thing to note is uh, this um, because it is a nonlinear equation, it can admit multiple solutions, but we are interested in the positive definite solution only. Okay. And that positive definite solution is going to lead us to a stabilizing controller, we will uh, we'll prove that in next class actually. So, whatever positive definite solution comes from here, this P matrix, okay, we that will lead to a stabilizing controller actually. Okay. So, we are interested in solving this equation. Uh, using the some one of the computationally efficient methods that are available now and out of the multiple solution that is part we are interested in that particular solution which will give us a positive definite uh, solution from, from this equation actually. Okay, so, that just uh, remember that part of it. Now, once we get a solution of that obviously, the, the lambda is ready lambda is p times x and hence the controller is also ready because that is the same formula that you are interested actually. So, u equal to minus r inverse uh, minus r inverse b transpose p. Now, the p is now no more a, a time varying matrix, but it is a constant matrix and hence the gain is also a constant matrix actually. Okay. So, that is how we get a constant gain uh, state feedback control using LQR formulation. So, that is uh, how it is actually. All right. So, now uh, to clarify our concepts, we will discuss uh, two examples. Okay. And then uh, it will give us better idea of what is what is going on here actually. First example is a standard example which talks about stabilization of an inverted pendulum okay, by moving the base cart actually. So, you have a uh, inverted pendulum attached to a cart where the cart can move horizontally okay, so that the what I mean the uh, the task here is to move it appropriately okay, so that the the, 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 the uh, but torque uh, that uh, by moving this you will actually produce a counter torque and this counter torque is going to balance that actually. Okay. So, we are not interested in the linear motion of the card per se, but let us directly interpret that whatever uh, torque that you are generating by this movement is actually the control variable. And uh, the control variable per se is not really the torque, but torque divided by moment of inertia, which is nothing but the negative of angular acceleration actually. So, that that is the that is the control variable that you have taken for solving this problem. But remember once you know this control the torque is known and once you know the torque uh, depending on other dynamics other parameters you can actually compute this uh, linear motion as well actually. So, the, the ignoring those complications and all we will just directly take uh, this control u as a counteracting angular acceleration that can stabilize this uh, this mass actually. 
okay, in the in the inverted position. Now we will not go through the details of dynamics, uh, how they are derived and all that. Uh, the dynamics of a pendulum is fairly well known probably. But we can uh, linearize this equation, that particular equation about the vertical equilibrium position and get this kind of a linearized system dynamics actually, okay, where omega n square is the system parameter given by z by l, l is the length of this uh, line actually. Okay. So, first thing is to write this uh, system dynamics uh, in state space form okay. and once I take theta x 1 equal to theta and x 2 equal to theta dot, I can visualize this system dynamics this way okay, which is very straightforward because x 1 dot is x 2 which is theta dot okay, that is straightforward and x 2 dot is this equation which is omega n square times theta which is x 1 that is what it is here and minus uh, 1 times u basically. So, that is how it comes here. So, we have got a, a matrix and we have got a b matrix and that is x dot equal to x plus b u is known to us now. Now, we have to select a performance index which can stabilize this thing uh, about the vertical equilibrium point. So, let me select a performance index this way because theta needs to be minimized, theta has to be 0 actually ultimately. So, if theta needs to be minimized then uh, let me select a cost function this way where 1 over c square is nothing but the waiting thing for the u square term actually. Okay. So, if I do not want too much of uh, control uh, then I can aim to increase this uh, this term 1 by c square of 1 by c square term that means c I have to decrease actually and vice versa. Okay. In other words if I want to have control theta in a very tight manner then this part has to be much more than that that means I have to increase c so that 1 by c square will be less actually. Okay, so, that is that is how it is. Now, once you have this I mean system dynamics, you have A B matrices. Once you have the cost function ready, you have Q and R matrices and we are interested in infinite time setting and whenever there is infinite time thing, remember except will go to 0 at infinity. So, there is no point in having a, an additional term. So, phi lambda f is equal to P f x f which is nothing but 0 actually anyway. So, the remaining is the outside term, outside the integral there is a 0 term, the phi is actually 0 here as long as you talk about infinite time problems in the LQR framework. So, we do not need that term anyway. Okay. So, we have A matrix, we have B matrix, we have Q and R. So, first thing is to check controllability and I assume that uh, controllability check has already been done, the system is certainly controllable anyway. Okay. Now, let us go to the ARE algebraic record equation solution. So, this is our uh, equation P A plus A transpose P minus P B R inverse B transpose P plus Q equal 0. So, we have all the matrix elements ready now A, B, Q, R all that put it back okay. and also remember we want a symmetric positive definite solution for P ultimately. So, we will take the P matrix this way which is already a symmetric matrix okay. P 2, P 2 here and P 1, P 3 there actually. Now, once you plug in back there P A transpose P all sort of things uh, elements by element matrix by matrix elements the, equa the equation turns out to be that way. That means, uh, if you if you really see the equation term by term then first uh, first element one, one one element will give this this equation and uh, one two element will give you this which is again same thing as two two one element and then there will be a two two thing which will give us that. So, we have three free, uh, free variables P 1, P 2, P 3 here and three equations in place. Okay. So, certainly we can solve these three equations, but these equations are non-linear. Remember there is a P 2 square, P 2, P 3 term here, P 3 square here like that. So, we will get uh, kind of multiple solutions actually. Okay. So, from this equation it is obvious that P 2 is like this. So, you can apply this uh, I mean quadratic term solution formula and get, the, get it that way and from here you can get P 3 that way. So, we do not, uh, but we have the sign ambiguity in both places and we do not know what is right now actually. But you can also see that uh, P 2 we cannot tell, P 2 is a off diagonal term, but P 3 is a diagonal term and we want a positive definite solution. So, P 3 needs to be positive actually. So, this, this uh, minus sign is ruled out now. So, we will take P 3 as positive of 1 by C and uh, square root of 2 P 2 actually, but remember 2 P 2 is also not known. So, to get a real number P 2 has to be a positive number first actually. Okay. Now, that helps us in deciding this this sign ambiguity, but still the sign has to be only positive quantity because remember this quantity is at a square root of this quantity is certainly greater than that. So, if you take negative sign here then P 2 becomes negative number and P 3 becomes complex quantity which we, we do not want that actually. So, that way we will take only positive thing here and positive thing there 
Okay. So, then we are we are done with P 2 and P 3 and P 1 is a direct solution in terms of uh, P 2 and P 3, we can just see from here P 1 equal to this term minus that term. So, once P 2 and P 3 are in place, then P 1 solution is also ready. But in this particular problem, we may not need P 1 solution because ultimately the gain matrix is not a function of uh, P, P 1 really, but certainly you can solve for that. So, that is that is what is all given here as I told P 3 is positive square root of that and P 2 is also positive positive sign out here actually and P 1 is can be computed this way. Anyway, ultimately uh, K is gain matrix K is R inverse B transpose P. So, if you plug in that, it uh, you can see that uh, this gain matrix turns out to be like this and hence the control is nothing but uh, minus K times X where the K is like this uh, row vector and X is, X is theta and theta dot. So, you can you can put that theta theta dot and then negative sign. So, U control is actually this way c square into p 2 theta plus p 3 theta dot actually. So, as long as you keep feeding this theta and theta dot information which is state information, then your control is, a, is actually ready through the gain matrix k. So, that is the whole idea of uh, synthesizing the control for the inverted pendulum this way. Now, also remember that if I change the cost function matrix and have a theta dot term which is certainly better because theta should not, not only go to 0 but around 0 it is not to keep on vibrating actually that, that is not allowed that is not desirable actually. So, you can it is also nice to analyze theta dot term as well here ok. That means, in that situation I suggest that you can derive the rework on this example and de re derive everything with respect to one more term which is q 1 times theta square plus q 2 times theta 2 square I mean theta dot square basically. If you have that there then but the necessary results and all I suggest that you do it yourself actually. All right. So, now the question is we got the solution is there any guarantee that the, the, the so, I mean this particular controller leads to a, a stabilizing controller. Let us examine that question. So, first we analyze the open loop solution, open loop solution remember cons considers only this A matrix whatever A matrix is there here without any control term, control is 0. So, that let me analyze the, the Eigen values of this particular matrix and that one turns out to be lambda i minus uh, open loop a determinant which is nothing but that is equal to 0, then uh, lambda i certainly plus or minus omega n and certainly this system is unstable because there is a right half pole in the uh, a matrix, open loop a matrix actually. Okay, so, they said because of this uh, one right half pole on the real axis uh, certainly it is an unstable system. But is the closed loop system stable at least? So, let us analyze the closed loop matrix now, which is uh, A C L is A minus B K, because that is what it will operate, right? A x dot equal to A x plus B U and x, okay. x dot is equal to A x plus B U okay, and U equal to minus K x. So, if I put them together, then x dot equal to A minus B K times x. So, that is uh, that is what. Uh, I have here. Okay. So, that is what uh, is my closed loop matrix B k basically. So, let us analyze the Eigen values of that per closed loop matrix and see what is going on here actually. So, A minus B k turns out to be like that and for simplicity now we will define another term omega square is nothing but square root of omega fourth uh, plus c square top and then P 2 and P 3 we can write in terms of omega n and omega. Okay, that is uh, that will lead to simplicity in algebra actually. Then closed loop poles will be dictated by this characteristic equation now and you can plug all those numbers that you have here in this uh, in this ACL matrix and try to see the try to see what is going on here and then lambda 1 2 will turn out to be something like this. Okay. Remember there is a negative sign here okay. that means the real part of the solution is certainly negative for both the things. So, what you what originally you had uh, something like uh, uh, two poles out there, now this these two poles got shifted to these poles actually. Okay. This is no more the case, this is open loop, okay. o open loop is not there, this is certainly the closed loop poles actually. Okay. So, obviously, the open loop uh, thing was not good whereas, the closed loop system is stabilizing actually. Okay. So, that is the thing, the closed loop is guaranteed to be asymptotically stable. And we will also see that in this class that how do we can kind of guarantee this for all possible cases not just for an inverted pendulum and all that actually that proof will be there in the next class actually. 
Okay, before we closing this lecture, let us study one more example and see what all goes on here actually. Okay, so, this is a finite time temperature control problem let us study and here we are talking about a system dynamics like this let us say theta is nothing but the temperature and theta n is the ambient temperature. Let us say it is fixed at 20 degree for uh, just an example situation and u is the heat input and if, if u is negative it is a heat taken away it is a cooling condition if he, 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 I mean u is positive then it is a heating condition which is that means in the in the winter season you can then think about uh, giving heat input to the room and all that actually. Okay. So, this is the system dynamics certainly it is a linear linear dynamics, but there is a bias term out here actually okay. minus a theta plus a theta n. So, that is the bias term the theta n is ambient temperature which is constant okay. a is also a b r constants anyway. Okay. So, how do you handle this particular situation now it is rather easy to handle by doing a change of coordinate uh, sort of ideas we will see that uh, little later I mean this this one let us say. Uh, we will talk about that anyway. Now, the what is the uh, what is the um, objective here? Objective is to take this theta to a desired temperature actually okay. and that desired temperature let us talk about that uh, I mean some sort of a 30 degrees what we really want the desired theta basically. Okay. So, if you see we can formulate these two cases in two different ways. Okay. One case okay, I, okay, while, I, while I aim for this 30 degree taking this 20 degree to 30 degree I also should aim to minimize this control effort actually okay. that is another objective anyway. So, if I, I can formulate this uh, this entire problem in two different ways okay. one case I can talk about a cost function which is a control minimization only and which is hard constraint in place okay. that means at t equal to t f we want the theta to be exactly equal to 30 degree. As a alternative case 2 we talk we do not aim for that exactly 30 degree as long as you are close to 30 degree we are fine, but uh, so hence the, the cost function that you are talking here is some penalty function here outside the integral at t that means at t equal to t f theta f should be close to 30 actually okay. So, as long as I take s f equal to I mean greater than 0 and have a term like that then we are okay actually okay. This is so theta f will be forced towards 30 degree. But how much close to 30 we do not know that for that question remains open that depends on uh, the selection of SF actually ok. So, that uh, that we will see from example to example if you can talk uh, SF if you jack up SF the SF becomes higher and higher ultimately it, it, it leads to this hard constraint sort of problem actually. Okay. So, here you talk about hard constraint problem here you talk about soft constraint problem actually ok. So, let us see how do you handle this actually. anyway. Anyway, so that is uh, uh, let us see how do we handle this. Now, the solution part of it ok, first we do a change of variable. So, we take theta minus theta a with the ambient temperature that is what our x is and hence we go back to this this uh, this dynamics then this dynamics remember theta a is uh, is fixed ok. So, maybe this is theta a ok. Yeah this is theta a actually ok sorry. Ok this is theta a uh, well ok. Alright, so if it is theta a then we can talk about change of variables here. So, co change of coordinates essentially ok within the theta x is defined as theta minus theta a. So, x dot is something like this ok and uh, correspondingly you have to change the boundary condition values. So, x of 0 turns out to be theta a minus theta a which is 0 uh, and uh, x f we will see later in the hard constant part of it ok. Now, what you what you are doing is ok no matter whether you have hard constant or soft constant Hamiltonian remains same because it is nothing to do with the, this particular type I mean whether it is out outside term Hamiltonian is only L plus uh, lambda transpose f which is either inside the integral or system dynamics. So, for both of the kind of problems the that part remains same. So, Hamiltonian is like that. So, lambda dot is that way minus del s by del x equal to x and uh, you have this uh, optimal control equation del s by del e equal to 0 from which you can derive u equal to minus lambda b. Now, necessary condition hence if you, I mean you can summarize that uh, the state equation 
that is what it is, coasted equation that is what it is and control equation that is what it is. So, these three equations need to be satisfied together basically. The nice part of the I mean observation here is this lambda dot equation is, is independent of uh, itself, I mean uh, independent of any other variable x and u. So, because lambda dot is a function of only lambda, this equation can be integrated uh, directly basically. And then once lambda is there, u is there and once u is there, you can put it back and then think about solely solving the state equation also actually. And all this will happen in a closed form manner, which is a nice part of it actually. So, let us uh, solve this equation, lambda dot is a lambda first and then you can visualize the solution that way. With respect to lambda f, the solution takes this form. Remember, typically we take lambda 0, but in this particular case we take lambda f is the reference value. So, E is that exponential term becomes not t minus t 0, but it is t minus t f actually, that is the, that's the difference. So, lambda of t is given something like that, which is nothing but that and t f minus t is, is typically written because that is a positive quantity. In missile gradients especially it is called as time to go, t go. So, the, uh, this is uh, this is this form actually, okay. so lambda a takes this form. And hence, once lambda is taken that form, then you can substitute back here. You can remember this uh, completely time dependent, I mean, explicit function of time now. So, we can solve this equation uh, uh, also u equal to minus uh, b times lambda, where lambda comes from there actually. So, that is what u. And once u is in place, we can go back to the state equation and then substitute there and then tell okay, that is my state equation actually. So, let me try to solve this state equation which consists of partly the homogeneous system, partly the forcing function actually. There are several ways of solving this. We can take the help of uh, Laplace transform and then tell okay, this is if I apply Laplace transform both sides, then that is what it is. And then x of 0 is fixed at 0, remember that is the boundary condition, x of 0 is 0. Okay. So, we plug that x of 0 is 0 and then uh, we try to solve this x of s and then uh, uh, x of s turns out to be like that, take the partial fraction decomposition for this standard procedure and then we take the inverse Laplace transform of that and hence we obtain this solution actually. Okay. We are still not done because lambda f is actually unknown that is what uh, okay, that is what needs to be found out actually. Now, for that we will take make use of the hard constraint let us say case 1 and then x of t f is equal to 10 that is what we are interested in. So, if we put x of f equal to t f, I mean equal to 10 sort of thing in this equation and take t equal to t f, then what is whatever you get here will give you the solution for lambda f actually. Okay. So, equating this two, you get uh, simplify and then get a solution for lambda f. Now, once you get a solution for lambda f, your, you can go back to your x of t solution because that is the only unknown here. Now, our lambda f is known to you. So, let us talk about uh, solving that actually here. Okay. So, x of t talks out uh, turns out to be like that. Okay. All right. So, what is the what is beauty here? Now, if you put t equal to t f here, then obviously, these two terms will cancel out and x of t f will be equal to 10. So, in other words, the boundary condition is exactly met actually using this particular controller whatever. Okay. Now, control is uh, controller is minus b term lambda where lambda solution is given like that, that and lambda f we have found out using this particular thing. Okay. All right, so that is case one. Now suppose you do, uh, I mean the the problem here in in case one is a kind of a control variable actually. Okay, when t approaches t f, the control variable is uh, typically not uh, nice actually. It may suit up to infinity. I mean that's the typical hurdle in any finite time optimal control problems per se actually. Okay. But uh, you can see that this uh, uh, x of f is actually met in a very nice way basically. Okay. <coughs> okay, so, uh, now let us see that uh, how do you handle this problem in a soft constraint manner because that is the hard constraint way. Now, case 2 is soft constraint. So, we go back to this cost function and tell okay, lambda f is this way now, okay, from where you can solve x f in terms of lambda f that way. Okay. So, we have the solution in place already, okay, whatever that part remains same, we have to solve the lambda f in a different way though actually. Okay. So, we put this solution, you put t equal to t f and try to find a solution for lambda f uh, and that is what it is uh, done this way. So, lambda f turns out to be like that and hence lambda turns out to be that way, okay, which is given that way, that, that expression actually. 
So, u of t is equal to beta minus b times lambda which is given like this basically ok. So, that is the soft constraint case. Now, the question is if I solve the same same problem using soft constraint and hard constraint the only thing I can actually approximate the hard constraint situation through the soft constraint formulation by taking S f going to infinity basically this cost function if I take S f infinity then this term is predominant. So, that is what the hard constraint I mean the soft constraint will try to approach the hard constraint problem. Does the solution also approach the hard constraint problem? I mean, that's that's the question actually. Okay. So we can do this analy analysis and tell, okay, if when S f goes to infinity, that U of soft control soft constraint formulation is given something like this, okay. And if S f turns to infinity, one by S f goes to zero. So I'm go, uh, I can cancel out that term and then further simplify this term and tell, okay, that is what the what the formula should be for the soft constraint under the limit S f turns to infinity. And this formula is nothing but the same control which turns out to for the hard constraint formulation actually. So, the soft constraint problem behaves like the hard constraint problem when S f goes to infinity that is the message actually ok, which is very compatible with what we thought in terms of cost function selection basically ok. When we select a cost function that is the meaning. So, as long as we put uh, not S f to infinity, but some finite number here then there is a nice formulation where it talks about a relative weightage between the how much close you want to go to the boundary condition and how much compromise on the control effort that you want to make actually. This will be a nice uh, interpretation that way basically ok. So, that is how the soft constraint and hard constraint problem can be handled. So, probably I will stop here in this lecture and uh, we will continue further on LQR theory in the in the last lecture. Thank you.